things would pan out as the world championship qualification points requirement shifted uh -oh. but it's time to get this game underway with prime catcher uh -oh. in the prize cards dean is going to lose a lot of the aggression that his deck is built around yeah really unfortunate to see that there it's at the top too so maybe assuming heavy ball could shuffle that around a colors experiment as well and some of those really valuable switch cards on the other side for grant chen does play the three copies of Chin Pao, so maybe not as bad there. And two of the three Pokestops, so maybe a little slower of an approach. We'll see how this works for our players. Sometimes Chen Pao gets off to a slow start and is very reliant on the Pokestop, maybe trying to combine it with Cypher Maniac's code breaking to find those key pieces. But if Grant Chen gets off to a great initial opening, won't be missing the Pokestops <laughs> too much. All right, you know what? Maybe we just shouldn't say anything, because that's not a great <laughs> opening. That's an Iron Hands. <laughs> iron Hands in the active. We did see this earlier on in the stream, Kyle. It seems like a huge stumbling block to have this four retreat cost Pokemon stranded in the active. And you think you might have a window of opportunity to set up behind this Pokemon's bulk. But with Dean Nizam's aggressive style, I don't know if Grant Chen's going to have enough time to get this safely out of the active spot and start using Chen, pa uh, Chen Pao's Shivery Chill. Right, that's the big issue. Not Finding the, the energies from Shivery Chill, it thins out the deck, it finds those resources, those get to the discard pile, and then, of course, you bring them right back. But with this Pokemon now stuck in the active spot, you're really left with the Prime Catcher as your only utility card to put the Chen Pao in the active. And... Yeah, this is a great attacker, but it might take a little bit of time to find all the energies for this Pokemon now. And after this opening, Buddy Buddy Pop and Grant Shen taking full stock of the deck, just like any good CEO would, checking the stocks. Um, but getting two Frigibax in play is nice. Going to opt for one Frigibax and a Bidoof. Very nice. Has a Frigibax in hand. Looks like a great setup to me, Kyle, but the next order of business is getting this Iron Hands out of the way. Right, and... There's not much you can do about that, honestly. You play your hand out and you try to get as many of these Pokemon down into play so that you can draw into a ton of resources. And you see Grant acknowledging, you know what? Uh, it's probably going to take a B-roll to make this work, maybe even two. Over time, we've seen Chen Pao players tap into this line more and more, playing the long game, having this additional draw, the additional access to resources because Hailblade, Moonlight Shuriken, these attacks, all sending your water energy to the discard pile means that you have to continuously find your superior energy retrievals, your super rods to recover those that fuel for your attacks to close out games so many chen pals lose out on the final bit of resources they'll need to close out a winning position and we see the frigibax played down and that is the lone frigibax dean usually salivates in these moments thinking about that prime catcher as an opportunity to easily work in cramorant for a knockout not this time as he sees the opening deck search with Nest Ball, Cramorant's already being eyed down on the bottom of the deck, but is going to see immediately that Prime Catcher is missing. And when it comes to Lost Zone play, the aggressive Cramorant lines are usually your first order of business. They're great on the table to take out some of these basic Pokemon before they can evolve. And if you don't have access to that, maybe Dean is happy to kick back and play that longer style of game that Lost Zone has slowly but surely become much more known for. Does that mesh with what we've been touting as a more aggressive build, though? Right. I, Dean has opportunities. So you can either pick up the pace and continue to draw through. We'll see what cards he finds uh, off of resources like that Conceal Cards, the Colrus Experiment that he has two of in hand already. If those start to turn into Buddy Buddy Poffins and switching effects, maybe even uh, some forest seal stone action, then you could see a huge opening turn, maybe even that Moonlight Shuriken that Grant was clearly thinking about as he made sure to have a couple of abilities lined up there. By having two Bidoof values at Bibarel immensely for card draw, and as you pointed it out, Kyle, with the Radiant Greninja entering play, access to Chorus experiments, it's too soon to tell where Dean is actually going to go on this turn. Spot. Certainly, you have to expect that this is a turn where Cramorant could provide some versatility, at least get some chip damage into the Iron Hands. It lines up well for follow-up, maybe with a Sableye, but I don't see any of the switching cards that you're looking for here. Yeah, pretty difficult choice being offered up here. 
because Corus's experiment lets you look at the top five cards of the deck, two of them must be sent to the Lost Zone. And Dean opts for Comfey and the Hisuian Heavy Ball. After seeing the deck with Nest Ball, knows that there's no Pokemon in there, but some players like to simply waste the Hisuian Heavy Ball just to thin it while also shuffling around those prize cards. So Prime Catcher is going to remain up at the top for the most of the game. Yeah, that's a little unfortunate, but uh, of course it is correct for Dean. He doesn't mm. need to go and see those cards. He's got a great idea of what's already in the prizes. At this point, it's very important to continue to fill up your board with these comfes, have the ability to switch between them, use multiple flower selections in a turn, and maybe get to that seven for the Mirage Gate as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. It does have the one copy of Rescue Board, which is great for fueling this along the way. Has a second Chorus's experiment in hand, as you pointed out, Kyle. So the march towards Mirage Gate has already been mapped out, especially with three Comfe now entering play. Yeah, plenty of opportunities here to see cards. We still have not seen the concealed cards. We'll see two cards each from the flower selecting. So six more cards to find one more switching effect would line up with a Cramorant attacking this turn into the Iron Hands. And of course, we know about the wackiness that you can find. If you chain together all those switching effects, there is a world where Moonlight Shuriken happens. Moonlight Shuriken, if the Iron Hands has been chipped down enough, can take even more prizes. Two Cramorant hits. Is this, am, am I maybe going too deep into the weeds? Hit it twice with Cramorant, clean it up with Sableye down the road, try to get three, four prize turns. I mean, it's happened sometimes. The, the damage doesn't go anywhere at this point. And this was the big uh, turn. I guess this, this selection really shows where Dean's thinking. Sableye is a very valued resource for cleaning up later on. The water energy would be great for Moonlight Shuriken, but at this point, Let's just play it safe. We got four into the law zone, and if we can find this Cramorant, we're, we'll be okay. I don't even know if that's an option this turn, though, unless uh, concealed cards can uh, bring us a basic Pokemon. And as Dean gets deeper and deeper into the deck, sees what resources are needed, what's getting sent to the law zone, can now make a confident decision to hold on to the psychic energy, <sighs> discard the darkness energy. Nest ball found. I saw a blue Pokemon, but it was Manaphy. Doesn't matter. Cramorant is there if you want it, but is there a way to move? The retreat has already been used for turn with the rescue board attached to this Comfey. Safety first. Manaphy to protect the board from that Radiant Greninja. An omnipresent threat when you're up against Chen Pao. Moonlight Shuriken shutting you out of the game entirely, and ironically something that Dean would also like to do to Grant. <laughs> it's just a great card. It's... Uh, you've, there's four different basic energy types in this list, but it's important to make sure that you have the opportunity with three water energies to potentially cash in on such a valuable attack. Just going to be another pass. Dean didn't do anything too flashy, but still a great foundation and is confident he'll have some additional time to look through the deck, put cards in the Lost Zone, thanks to, once again, Iron Hands EX being stuck in the active spot. Ultra Ball discards two water energies, so Grant Shen can search the deck for Bibarel to evolve and gain access to Industrious Incisors and draw back up to five cards once per turn. This could be an absolute slugfest with this hand. Just depends on what the Bibarel is able to find off of this. Of course, we see the Superior Energy Retrieval, the Ultra Ball in hand as well. So if you aren't able to find the Rare Candy, then you go for another Bibberol. You see the Code Breaker. Maybe that's the piece. Cypher Maniac's Code Breaking. You search your deck for two cards of your choosing. Put, shuffle your deck and put those two chosen cards on top. Great to combo with a lot of these draw power abilities to essentially search two cards. It's a make your own star birth, Kyle. And from this point... I wonder if Iron Hands EX is just going to become the, the attacker. Find Lightning Energy, find the Rare Candy, Backscalibur, try to go from there. Well, there's one issue with that. That's, that's three cards, and we, need, we can only find two. Second so. Bibarel is picked up, however. Forge. Can you thin the hand down enough? The Cypher Maniacs can bring Rare Candy, Backscalibur to the front, and at this point, really hoping to see Lightning Energy or one of those Earthen Vessels of, with the final two cards of the Bibberal. Two cards to make this turn absolutely delicious. Otherwise, Grant Shen has to sit back and watch Dean 
take another rep of flower selectings and putting more cards in the lost zone, getting Cramorant down to start putting damage on the Iron Hands EX, and this window of opportunity will begin to close. Not. Chen Pao, prime catcher? I mean, those are pretty good. <laughs> It's, it, it, it doesn't lead to the two prize knockout you're looking for with the Iron Hands cashing in on that early opportunity. Maybe Dean isn't ready with the follow-up Hoopa in this spot, but surely you've got, you've got some pretty solid resources there. The issue now is you can use Shivery Chill and get the additional two energies, and I, you got to pick which Pokemon is valuable. It looks like with the rescue board, Comfy is not long for uh, this world. This isn't, yeah, this definitely isn't half bad with Shivery Chill grabbing the two water energies right now to fuel Hail Blade. The superior energy retrieval will remain in the hand, and Grant Shen can continue to threaten with Iron Hands EX now that he's safely moved that back onto the bench. Every time the Iron Hands is in the active spot, and I think it might be stuck there for a while, the Chen Pao players have the prime catcher, and Grant Shen takes the first prize of this game. And for Dean now. Uh, answering in this Chin Bao can be a little tricky. There's certainly some options as you look through the list and see his opportunities. You have that Roaring Moon EX, or if you have uh, maybe a stadium in play, you could take the knockout there, removing that and dealing the 220 necessary. Raikou V is also a Pokemon that you try to work into the mix, but Grant was thinking about that. You see only four Pokemon on his bench. Try to avoid giving the clean numbers for a one-hit knockout. There are are no metal attackers in Dean's list, of course, trying to hit the Chen Pao for weakness, and it becomes very awkward. The bench space being taken up by Manaphy to protect the rest of this from a potential Moonlight Shuriken play. Grant Shen, with this empty bench space, is threatening so many different possibilities against Dean the Zom's board. All right, what opportunities does Dean have now? Five cards in the loss zone. Colder's Experiment is in hand. It wants to see the answer a little earlier, maybe off of the flower selecting. It's already seen the Roaring Moon, but maybe a stadium would feel even better. Besides to send Iron Hands to the Lost Zone, it is a pretty tall order to get that powered up. You're having to chase down Bibarels and Baxcalibers to even get maximum value of Ampy very much. Dean seems to be settling into just take two prizes off the Chen Pao whenever Grant Chen promotes something, just knock it out. Try to run this Chen Pao out of resources. Every time they attack, they have to spend a lot of time searching cards and attaching to do so, while Dean has a little bit more burst potential, thanks to Mirage Gate, can accelerate a Pokemon into play immediately. And I'm thinking, Kyle, that with Super Rod putting the Dark Energy back in is maybe trying to line up some sort of uh, Calamity Storm with the Roaring Moon EX to take down this Chen Pao EX. Needs an Artisan as well. It might be too much to ask. Yeah, the ordering's a little curious, so unless that Comfey is just the complete piece that you need in order to get the job done here. Because you still have not used the Colrus Experiment, mm. uh, which leads to maybe drawing into those energies that you just shuffled back in, which you never want to do when you're about to reach that Mirage Gate turn. Gotcha. And I'm glad that we certainly have an extended time clock for <laughs> the top four match here, because you can see with Dean having access to so many different resources, so many opportunities. Lost Zone being a deck known for how many individual decisions you have to make per turn off of every flower selecting, etc. Which energy are you going to save for which attacker you need to prioritize for the matchup itself on a macro scale, but also the current moment in time, considering what's in play, certainly does eat up the clock. Yeah, I mean, we're at six cards in the Lost Zone. The Sableye and the Psychic Energy are lined up there. But Dean is continuing to dig through. Now has the seventh card, but would not like to see any energies in this spot. And Dean is being very reluctant to cast the uh, Koros' experiment. And I think that might be he's digging and searching, finds a boss's orders as well, is putting together an attack and wants to boss Whoa. something instead. He's able to throw away a switch in this spot. 
with the boss's orders already in hand, of course, when you see a Pokemon like that Backscalibur, that lone Backscalibur, no Frigibacks in play, you'd love to remove it from play if possible. But do the cards line up here now? Yeah, do you have an attacker? Cramorant's not going to do it. No. You need to put a two prizer up, but Dean bides his time, doesn't have an attack through here, and fortunately in a matchup like this where you can buy some time with single prizers, maybe this doesn't put him too far behind, Kyle. I'm not sure I like it, though. This is always dangerous to let Chen Pao get these extra reps of leaving this Pokemon in the active spot to use Shivery Chill to boss up potential things from your back, uh, from your bench. Radiant Greninja goes down, maybe Manaphy goes down, and suddenly the threat of Moonlight Shuriken against your Comp phase goes down. Dean has to take a turn off to super rod the Manaphy back rather than continuing his plan of setting up attackers and actually getting into the game. Right, and for, for Grant, it's as simple as find Earth and Vessel, find Lightning and Energy, and I'm going to start taking two prize cards a turn. If you're going to play this slow approach, uh, we're completely fine here going up three prize cards. And another Frigibax uh, bench for good measure. And some Super Cold to round it out. No more energy left in the deck. Superior Energy Retrieval is in the hand. And two Bivarels ready to go. Double Industrious Incisors means you can draw up to five cards, Kyle. Use your Superior Energy Retrievals, your Ultra Balls, whatever you happen to find to thin the hand back down and then draw up once again. Grant Shen is widening, creating an immense gulf in this game right now. Not just in terms of prize cards, but just in terms of foundational setup and resources. Yeah, at this point, for Dean, you're, you're trying to find any weaknesses, and typically that answer is use a Roxanne, remove a, a barrel, remove Excalibur, whatever it may be. That includes only one Bavarian in play. That includes Prime Catcher on Excalibur. You have to have a multitude of pieces working for you, and it's just not here on this opening game. Whenever we see these very complex Mirage Gate-focused multi-attacker Lost Box decks, they have so many different individual cards that are so important and can really stumble when they end up in the prize cards or, a, based on a hard decision, end up in the lost zone instead. So Dean really struggling because of the loss of Prime Catcher, fo uh, really foiling his aggressive ideas, and Grant Chen has all the time in the world finally to bring Iron Hands EX back into the active. What once was stranded now arrives triumphant to amp you very much and take two prizes. Yeah, and so wise of Grant as well to include this water energy on the Chimpow. In a world where potentially this Backscalibur is removed from play, you now have the opportunity to attack with the Iron Hands or attack with the Chimpow. Just a single energy gets the job done. Dean now on the back foot, and that is certainly an understatement. Comfe comes into the active. There is one flower selecting to be had after the Colrose's experiment. Since a Cramorant and a Darkness Energy to the Lost Zone, as the further time goes on, Dean is forced now to use very specific attackers to deal with the HP counts on Iron Hands EX, 230 HP. Chen Pao EX, 220 HP. And after falling behind three prize cards, having to put a two-prizer in the active spot to respond is a recipe for disaster. Yeah, at this point, what's your response? You have Hoopa that could be promoted, take the mm -hmm. knockout here. And at that point, Grant Chen, all he has to do is have another Chen Pao down, place multiple energies on the board, and he's got a checkmate set up where there's only one prize remaining. It leaves Dean in a situation where he has to prime catcher stall and use Sableye. It's just it's an ugly spot to be in. And it seems like this got out of hand so quickly with that missed opportunity in turn two. And when you play a deck like this and you know it's complicated, Lost Zone as an archetype is known for its ability to come back and really thrive in the later stages of the game thanks to Sableye. But I'm wondering if Dean should call it, try to get to game two, play a long game two and have time for a long game three. Hoopa EX now being benched with one attached for turn. Still going to finally pull the trigger on this aggressive line you talked about, Kyle. Yeah, I mean, it, it's here for this reason. Of course, if you can take the knockout on this Pokemon, you need to have uh, a clean return answer to Iron Hands. It's one of the main reasons why we were so worried about this card when we first saw it uh, come into play. It's, it, it takes knockouts left and right against these lower hit point Pokemon like the Comfey, like the Manaphy. So have this answer lined up, but 
Grant's easily going to find a solution. He's got a multitude of cards in hand, so there has to be some disruption to go along with this. Comfe retreats. Hoopa EX comes into the active spot, uses Energy Crush to knock out the Iron Hands EX, and Dean Nizam takes two prizes, trying to even up the race here, but Grant Shen has Chen Pao EX with one energy already attached to it, prepped and ready to go. Pokestop now draws three Ooh. cards. There was never any doubt. Canceling Cologne, Suing Heavy Ball, Super Rod now in the hand. Double superior energy retrieval I'm also seeing, Kyle. The world is his oyster. One Heavy Ball just to get it out of the hand and look at the prizes. I don't think there was anything in there. Yeah, just a bunch of Pokestops and a rare candy at this point. <laughs> You're not you're not too concerned about those. Uh, you just need to continue to thin down the deck so that the barrel is able to find every resource you'd need to close out in a situation like this. We see Super Rod, we see Ultra Ball. Everything is there to set up two Chen Pao that cannot be stopped. When you have the KO knocked, uh, lined up, you don't want to just start taking prizes willy-nilly. Do your due diligence as a player. Thin down the hand. Grant Chen is very aware of Dean running Roxanne at this point, I would imagine. Doesn't want the heavy ball to go back into the deck, and there's plenty of other cards he can potentially thin down as well. Yeah, this is so wise, too, when you're using uh, all those superior energy retrievals as your way to return energies. Use Super Rod as well. You can bring those two water energies back into play. Huzzah, there they are. <laughs> They're ready to come right back, <laughs> as you see. The Shivery Chill can be activated whenever. Bring those energies right back into play by way of the Baxcalibur, and you'll have the knockout lined up for the Hoopa pretty quickly. And that's so nice when the Shivery Chill does most of the heavy lifting to get the water energy back, rather than relying on superior energy retrieval. Discarding two cards from the hand can be pretty cumbersome sometimes when the rest of your hand is just way too good. But reconsidering the attachment here... Yes, maybe just considering if those energies should potentially be any of the fodder used, if the hand has to be thinned down, if a superior energy retrieval has to be used. But ultimately, energies are a valuable resource in this spot. Getting them onto the board basically locks up that you'll have the two attacks to close out this game. And this is another line we see from Chen Pao. You get the first Chen Pao into the active spot. You Shivery Chill, maybe retreat to energy off of it to use another Shivery Chill. I'm not sure there's any energy left in the deck at this point. Just going to go for superior energy retrieval. You know, almost all the water energies are here and ready to go. They are. Yeah, that's, uh, we see three on the active one. Oh, there it is. That was like, where's the hand. eighth? Where's the eighth? It yep. is in the hand. <laughs> they are ready to oh, go. Oh, I love this. Yeah, Just the over-attachment so of, en of energy. And what are the resources left over? It's, well, now you see the Buddy Buddy Poffins, which you wish you could just get rid of. But if they get shuffled in by way of Roxanne, still two Bibberl ready to go and shuffle or continue to draw and maybe find either that Irida, that superior energy retrieval, whatever it will be to get you over the hump. Mm -hmm. And don't think, folks, that Bibberell is going to be the be-all, end-all answer versus Roxanne. If you draw back into these buddy-buddy poffins and they're just duds, missing out on an attack is doom for Chen Pao EX. Once you get your engine established, you need to be attacking and taking prize cards every turn. And Dean, at this point, just has to cross his fingers that Grant Chen is going to miss a step. And after seeing sequencing of this caliber, I don't know if it's possible. Yeah, he's got me smiling ear to ear over here. That additional energy held is so smart. You can find it with Shivery Chill. And you'll you have can the, see the confidence on his face. You'll have the fourth energy to deal with any amount of hit points your opponent can put in the active spot. 240 breaks through everything that you could potentially see from Dean's side. So it's all lined up there. One prize remaining. Dean... It's trying to find a way, but at this point, it's, it's Roxanne and Prey. Mm -hmm. And I think a big factor, certainly, in Dean's inability to threaten in the early game and maybe find some counterplay in this position is lack of the prime catcher. Yeah, it's, it's pivotal to the, the opening segment where you could target down that Frigibax, take the knockout, and completely slow down Grant's opening setup these situations where you could have targeted down when there was just that single Baxcalibur, mm -hmm. no Frigibax in play. You could really put your opponent in a terrible spot. Instead, now, it is Sableye. It is Boss Stall. 
and you can you can try in these spots. Remove that other Bibberol from play, but we see piles and piles of energies ready to roll. We're moving on to game two. Beautifully done, Grant Shen, with just one prize card remaining. For most decks, this could be an awkward position to be forced to take an additional prize, but Grant used his resource management beautifully there, and it was all set up way ahead of time that he would be able to get that final attack almost no matter what. Yep, it lined up so well, and for Dean, it's it's gonna be that, just looking at the opening prize card, seeing no pink, no prime catcher. It really, it really hurts, but that's when you're thankful that uh, this is a best two out of three. We've got an opportunity here. I think we saw what perfectly 25 minutes off of the clock there, so mm -hmm. plenty of time for these players to see game two, maybe even a game three, and you didn't really show much that game, if you're Dean. <laughs> you, you, took, you took one knockout, removed it from play, and Grant just played good Pokemon. When we contrast both players, Grant Shen got the perfect setup, had not just a threat in the active spot, but additional threats on the bench, prepped with energy, ready to go. Dean, meanwhile, was trying to put together attacks with the Mirage Gate, but simply only found Hoopa EX to respond to Iron Hands, which is great. That's what you want it to do, but without the additional threat potential, somebody to take over once Hoopa EX clocks out is certainly the big issue. And even without the lack of threat there, he did fill up the Lost Zone quite diligently. Yeah, I mean, cards were flying. I, do you even remember turn two if there was a Colrus played? I feel like we we went for the, the ball strategy, and then when it wasn't there, he just stopped playing. But the, there mm -hmm. were there were a lot of cards flying around left and right. I feel like he didn't even play a Colrus experiment, but I think he had it and slowly started to circle in on that boss's orders idea. Yeah, it just the, the cards just didn't really line up there. Wanted to go for one strategy, but you run out of options when you don't have that prime catcher, when you can capitalize on that early advantage. And when you see Cranch go up three prize cards with a setup like that, you know it's over. You, when you miss that window of opportunity, certainly as a Lost Zone player, the comeback potential isn't quite there because Sableye doesn't hit the high HP. You can take one Bibarel, but you can't take out a back Scalibur with just one rep of Lost Mine. Shen Pao and Iron Hands both dodged Cramorant beautifully. That chip damage is also very important for your ability to threaten with single prizers later in the game. Well, looks like a mulligan here, though. Yep, yeah, it's going to be a welcome sight to Dean, who is starting one of his least favorite starters. I actually didn't get eyes on it there, Kyle. Do you want to let me in, or do you want to save it for the big reveal for our audience well, at home? We, we can we can save it. It's a uh... We've seen it before. How about that? Is that, a, <laughs> is that enough insight for you? Oh, no. But Grant Shen still looking very confident. Doesn't mind taking the mulligan there. Giving Dean one extra card. What harm could it hurt? Yeah, this is a free game. Another? Okay, another mulligan. Maybe I spoke too soon. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm bringing out some of the caster curse <laughs> juju here to keep Dean in this best of three. Well, that's, a, that, that's just it for Grant and just get it all out of the way in the useless game two here now. <laughs> Who cares if, if this doesn't work out? You just go first in game three and we'll be fine. Well, it's great to have that buffer. As a competitive player at this stage, you played a beautiful game one and it's not just, oh, I won because my opponent got unlucky. He played out of his mind that game. We can't emphasize this enough, folks. So you've just built built a great buffer for yourself heading into the second game. Plenty of time left on the clock. Give your opponent a couple extra cards in their starting hand. You know they're going to see plenty of cards anyway thanks to flower selecting, so it doesn't make a huge difference. Silene in the prizes for Grant. And over on Dean's side, no access to Hoopa EX just yet, but I'm not seeing any hot pink, so he's got the prime catcher in there somewhere. That's right. One of the two back Excalibur prize, that Silene prize could be unfortunate, and the Hoopa, as always, that answer to Iron Hands. Speaking of iron hands. <laughs> a big, bulky boy stuck in the active spot. Dean immediately opens up with a Sui and Heavy Ball. Going to check the prize cards out right now. Ooh, uh, Hoopa or Comfe. Hmm, tough, tough, tough. I don't like when iron hands goes unchecked, mm. but I do like setting up. 
the Iron Hands, it's so hard to call when it's going to arrive on the scene, right, Kyle? Yeah. Ops for Comfey and says, I think I can take a couple knockouts on a Chen Pao or we'll, something. Yeah, we'll find the Hisuian Heavy Ball or the, the Hoopa. We've got two out of six prize cards that could help us out in this spot. Seems like good odds to me. And with Buddy Buddy Poffin, two Comfey, switch oh, cards. Oh, my gosh. Seems to be this engine might leave the station. Grant, calm down. <laughs> He's been playing a long weekend of Pokemon, has to sit and wait for a pretty long turn to resolve before his Chen Pao gets to start working. It's going to be confused at this point. <laughs> buddy, buddy, Poffin, what do you find here? <laughs> All the companies are in hand. They're ready to roll. And this is the difference when you start this Iron Hands as opposed to Grant Shen starting the Iron Hands. You've got a ton of switching effects. We could see three cards in the law zone potentially on this opener and that's that is great news if you're dean yeah i'm wondering if dean should have just taken the hoopa ex because of this buddy buddy thing but perhaps just wants all four comfy we'll go buddy buddy here to get these two out of the deck maybe the second buddy buddy gets nothing just whiff it and play down four comfy use all of the i think we saw at least two switch cards in the hand start filling up the lost zone very high odds of finding the rescue board and keeping this chain going. Yeah, this hand is <laughs> has a lot going on. And let's start to flower select. You look at the top two cards of your deck. Choose one to go to the hand. The other two goes. The other one goes to the lost zone. Not going to be able to use this lightning energy for the rest of the game. Well, water energy is definitely the one that you're looking for. That is the one in combination mm -hmm. with the Radiant Greninja that's going to line up for some great plays. Already see the Mirage Gates there, ready to roll. There's a third Mirage Gates. There's a problem now. What supporter are we playing next turn? We have one Colrus. Okay, that's good, too. All right, now we just need to find Radiant Greninja, and this could be quite a turn. Attach for turn and into a retreat. Comfey number three. Third flower selecting now. Everything that D needs besides Radiant Greninja is pretty much already in the hand. Yeah, didn't see the other card, but one was a Super Rod, I believe. Right, Oh, a Switch. He's got so many old arts in there. This is a great hand. The utility is there. The ability to get your, your Pokemon into the active spot to use the flower selectings is so pivotal. No attackers as of yet, but with Coral's experiment and way more flower selectings on the horizon, Dean is, um, is going to be threatening an attack yep. imminently. Ever so sneaky, setting up those cards in the Lost Zone, potentially to line up some big knockouts, and is on Grant Shen to establish a bench that maybe can withstand the second turn. It's always a nice boon to start with Chen Pao in the active, certainly. Shivery Chill grabs two water energy, and he's already taking notes, seeing what's in the deck. So don't have that Silene to work with. A couple other pieces that one back Scalver also prized. Definitely have to consider that, as we've seen that Pokemon mm -hmm. removed from play very quickly with the opposing player's prime catcher. And a lot of players have you know, their first order of business being uh, to boss up and knock out a Baxcalibur, regardless of whether you know there's another Baxcalibur, forcing your opponent to jump through some hoops and find that rare candy, and Dean, just by taking a natural play such as that, will be dealing devastating damage to Grant Shen unless he can find that second Baxcalibur out of the prize cards. Irida picks up Radiant Greninja and a Buddy Buddy Poffin, so the gang's going to be all here shortly, Kyle. Yeah, and we saw there's also the Pokestop in hand, so uh, opportunities to see even more item cards that could potentially help out here. We see the Shuffle first, so maybe uh, drawing with the Radiant Greninja to see if you can find some additional help, maybe another Pokemon here or another Buddy Buddy Poffin, Nest Ball, whatever it may be, something to help fill out this bench so that Maybe a Moonlight Shuriken doesn't destroy us. The Moonlight Shuriken has pressure on both players in this matchup, and it's so bizarre. Dean does not have the Mana Fee yet, and now after seeing Radiant Green inter interplay, might be considering already going to get it. Finds the Nest Ball off there, so rewarded with an additional Pokemon now. And 
Here's the, the, the big turn once more. Do you ever, are you ever scared enough to triple backs? <laughs> I don't like it, Kyle. Grant Chen has shown to be pretty confident, um, knowing that there's only one back Excalibur. Maybe you're going to play it a little bit loosey goosey, but I think, yeah, just the one Bidoof, one Fridge of backs, use the nest ball, to find a second Chen Pao? Second, nope. second Bidoof? Don't be so sure. There's nest ball, there's ultra ball. He's got a good considerations. This could be the ugliest board state to start a game, but here it is. And especially after seeing Raiko V <laughs> enter the lost zone, wants to fill up the bench after all. Wow, and this is the situation that you can find yourself in in these spots because Grant is going to fully commit to understanding Moonlight Shuriken would ruin this game for me, but my board is now atrocious. If you knock out this Chen Pao, I'm working with uh, just a bunch of goofballs trying to take prize cards. Moonlight Shuriken knocks out two Frigia backs and you're maybe playing your macro under the assumption you're going to have one back Excalibur anyway. And there's the pass for turn. It's back over to Dean. Moonlight Shuriken wants to come through this turn. Is it possible? We'll see after a course this experiment. Yeah, I'm not so sure if you even want to go down that route just yet because these Frigia backs should be lined up for you down the road. Mm -hmm. If you can cash in on... Uh, maybe that knockout on the Chen Pao this turn. You put that pressure on your opponent, but you always know that eventually you could incorporate the Radiant Greninja as a two-prize knockout, have a single prizer in the, in the middle, in the position, uh, taking those knockouts and leave your opponent in an awkward spot. First flower selecting as well. If Dean wants to follow that line, take down Chen Pao EX, is it just going to be double Mirage Gate? What, what do we attack with, Kyle? Just depends on which Pokemon you find. Hey, yeah, has to find Roaring Moon. Yep. With Hoopa now in the prize card still. Yeah, I mean, well, Hoopa's not not doing much anyways, but yeah, it would have. <laughs> it's certainly better than that fourth Comfey at this stage. Sableye no longer gonna be uh, a potential card to use in this spot. Yeah, there is only one Sableye in the deck, which is kind of there for certain late game E scenarios. But this just shows that Dean is very much committed to a 2-2-2 two, two, two prize map, if possible. Oh, there is a prime catcher. Iron Hands, of course, is an attacker that could be incorporated. Maybe you target down a Pokemon like that Bidoof. It's, uh, it's not Certainly a big the threat right out. now. But the fact that your opponent has already played themselves into an awkward spot, maybe uh, removing that Pokemon could be the key to them not finding those valuable resources. Radiant Greninja is on the bench. There is one more slot available, but after a concealed card, Dean is hoping to evaluate every single possibility before Nest committing to a line. Ball. Nest Ball opens up some avenues now. Of course, with no stadium in play, taking the knockout onto this Chen Pao leads to a bunch of damage on a Roaring Moon. It's not ideal. Radiant Greninja lines up so cleanly into taking a couple knockouts on these Pokemon here, but then you open up bench spaces for your opponent, and they can play down multiple Bidoof, and they can continue to just build on an impressive board state. You almost want to punish your opponent for going for this triple Frigibax. We've seen the Sableye be a, a bench lock punish in a lot of states, but Dean has sent it to the loft zone, wants to go directly at these attackers rather oh. than trying to dance around with potential for super cold attaching to Baxcalibur and dealing with Buster Tail because Cramorant doesn't strike back effectively. That's also in the Lost Zone, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's EXs or bust for this man. That's right. Well, Dean is ready to take the knockout onto those fridge backs. It's, it's not a bad thing by any means. It just... It feels like you, you could save those prizes for a different spot, but the fact that you have the prime catcher after this as follow-up, it puts pressure on your opponent to have su uh, Super Rod and a way to search out Frigibacks right now. If they don't re-bench one of these Fridgies, you can target down one of the remaining three at this spot and easily remove that from play. Three prize cards, and your opponent has no energy acceleration. Both lines to consider. Dean has powered up Radiant Greninja. Is going to be hunting down those basic Pokemon, taking two prizes, trying to jump out ahead in this game. Grant Shen, meanwhile, as we've said, folks, has one back Scalibur. The other one is in the prizes. 
So it's going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting, getting potential for multiple attackers established like we saw in game one. But that always remains a tall order because I actually wasn't looking, Kyle. Does he have the means to get Bibarel in the hand? Um, it's already in hand. Okay, that perfect. makes it easy. <laughs> okay, okay. Then he's he does have some resiliency against this play. Has the means to draw and get out of dodge. And I suppose it was a switch cart then to bring the Greninja up. Yeah, it takes the knockout and removes those two fridges from play. And now Grant needs to have a pretty phenomenal turn, not only uh, to find a relevant attacker. Of course, you got that Shampoo there ready to roll, but. It's going to have to be the, the code breaking into some pretty solid cards to find that final back scalper with the other one in the prizes and also try to return one of these Frigid backs to the board. Even if you only have access to one back scalper, exactly. If that gets knocked out, put it back in the deck with Super Rod, try to re evolve it. It's like for Manning X code breaking is the, the opener to combo with Radiant Greninja. Or Bibarel, rather. This really is a delicate dance at this point. You, of course, could use Shivery Chill, find some additional resources. But if you want to draw with the Bibarel first, then you want you to thin your hand down. You want to use that Ultra Ball and get the back Excalibur. So then you have to use Radiant Greninja to draw first. <laughs> Just trying to make sure that all of the resources line up here. It's sequencing, Kyle. Which line lets me thin down my hand most consistently, depending on what is drawn, so that the Bibarel gets maximum effectiveness alongside the Chen Pao EX's Shivery Chill? It ends up staying on the Earthen Vessel, knowing where that Lightning Energy, of course, is very valuable. Looks like it's unchecked right now when you see this board state. <laughs> That's got to be a, a friendly sight. And we know that the Hoopa wasn't available there. Concealed cards now. Water energy go to the discard pile. And Grant Shen, oh, would you look at that? Gets <laughs> Earthen Vessel and Rare Candy. Has the Ultra Ball in hand to grab the back Excalibur. Discards Pokestop with the Earthen Vessel first to search out. There's also access to Shivery Chill. This will perhaps be something to end cap the turn after drawing with Bibarel. Yeah, Grant really wants to line this up so that only superior energy retrieval is in hand when you draw with the Bibarel and you already will have the, the Baxcalibur in play. It's very meticulous. It's We can't overstate how every individual sequence of playing cards in certain order can change whether you see one extra card off of your industrious incisors or not. And from a point like this, Kyle, where there's just one Frigibax in play, there's just one Bidoof in play, you know you can't rely on these Pokemon in the long term. Yep. Now I'm down, there is that final back scalper. You have the rare candy, you have the water energies. Ready to go. Four cards available with the, the barrel, and you've got the knockout most likely on the Radiant Greninja. That's going to be fine. But at this point, if I need Super Rod and replaying down that Frigibax, or just having enough energies in play to at least continue to, to have threats while you have this board that's pretty volatile, that's, that's, all you, that's what you got to figure out here. And four cards to help. Super Rod is found, but can you search from here? I think everything that could be done has been done. Superior energy retrieval and Irida going to be set up for next turn. But you do need at least three energy to knock out the Radiant Greninja to keep Dean from going for a Super Rod. Mirage Gate play using another Moonlight Shuriken potentially to soften up more of your back line, if that's even worth it. Yep, and this is a list that features canceling Cologne, so... I wouldn't be surprised if we had seen some energies onto the Radiant Greninja, but at this point says, I really hope this Champel goes unchecked. I'm throwing my energies here. Uh, sure, you could remove the Baxcalibur, but I will be able to knock out whichever Pokemon you have lined up. 
And once more, Dean is presented with the obstacle of Chin Pao EX in the active spot, demanding very specific attackers in order to take it down. Hoopa EX still in the prize cards to my reckoning, but has access to Roaring Moon at the very least, and Iron Hands EX kind of waiting on the bench. Doesn't hit for weakness, but still taxes this Chen Pao a little bit more to take it down. Yeah, there's there's a lot of different ways you can take this approach at this point. You could be very aggressive. You could use Prime Catcher mm -hmm. and maybe uh, start to incorporate Iron Hands as a way to knock out something like that, but barrel and go down to two prize cards remaining. Your opponent almost always is attacking with Chen Pao in that spot. And if you have the Roaring Moon to close out, then we're, we're ready to move on to game three. It just depends on if Dean wants to target resources or if he wants to just put all of his cards on the table and say, uh, <laughs> if you've got it, you got it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to promote a lot of threats right now. The Roaring Moon EX certainly presents a dual purpose for this list. The Calamity Storm threatening a decent chunk of damage if you have a stadium in play or just the frenzied gouging to be a knockout that you can rely on to checkmate your opponent in the later stages of the game. Super Rod going to put one Psychic Energy back in the deck. That is calculated. Only <laughs> once the one energy there. Let's see what resources are remaining. It's going to have zero energies left over. So Roaring Moon is the option, powered up now by Mirage Gate, can take out Chen Pao. Yeah, this works just as strongly. You can remove this Pokemon from play, have the Iron Hands as backup, hold on to that Prime Catcher. You have so many Comfys that you can be switching in and out of, and you know your opponent doesn't have a way to disrupt your hand. All these resources will be sticking around. It's going to be up to Super Rod to give you those last few energies of, for the Iron Hands or whichever Pokemon you close out with. Dean Nizam going for flower selecting now, seeing a bit more of the deck. Nest Ball goes to the Lost Zone, and I think that's a Super Rod coming to the hand. Great way to get these energies back in the deck, even if Grant Shen is able to respond and knock out this Roaring Moon EX. There's a retreat for turn into another Comfey. Has the switch already to bring the Roaring Moon into the active spot. So it's going to take this time to see even more cards from the deck. The more you thin, the greater your top decks are going to be. Gives up a Super Rod now, Switch Cart now, a card in hand to allow him to switch into another Comfey, see more cards. Where's the stadiums? <laughs> There's like, two copies of Artisan somewhere in here, Kyle. It's not going to be found and at this point. It's already played a ton of resources to get to this point. Is it really, after all that, a massive whiff? Do you have to just use Frenzied Gouging now to take out the Chimpow EX? Oh, no. Well, <laughs> knockouts are knockouts. <laughs> At this point, you could go down to two prize cards. And you just need to make sure you have the resources to close out. I see Super Rod. I see Mirage Gate. I see energy in hand. <sighs> Is it ever appropriate to Prime Catcher? And no, you, the Calamity Storm needs the, the stadium in hand to even be a threat. Yeah, this is all about the prize race at this point. Dean mm -hmm. wants to get out of this game in the next two turns, if you include this one. So with a lack of stadium in play, Calamity Storm's attack cannot be boosted means that Frenzied Gouging must be the response to knock out Chen Pao EX. Roaring Moon now deals 200 damage to itself. Stuck in the active with 30 HP. Grant Chen can take the revenge KO with just a stiff breeze. <laughs> well, we'll see. Maybe if this is a situation where an Iron Hands could come into play and start to manipulate this prize exchange, because five prizes never means two turns unless you have Iron Hands. <laughs> the Ampy very much taking three would be massive. And then the continuous threat of just more Chen Pows to come through, responding to the EXs that Dean must respond with against an Iron Hands EX. Certainly swings game number two way back into Grant Shen's favor. Can he put it all together? Yeah, it's, it's so risky to attack with that Pokemon. Of course, you're, you're wary of the Hoopa. That's 
one Mirage Gate likely to take a knockout. So is there a single prize option that you feel comfortable with? The issue there is you haven't seen the Prime Catcher, and you can't disrupt the hand. Dean has seen so many cards. It's just five cards or so left in his deck at this point. And if for some reason Grant Shen is not able to put together an attack, Dean would be very happy to get the Artisan out of the deck, incredibly likely from this point, and just start Calamity Storming, get as much value out of this two-prize two Pokemon as possible. Yeah, this, this turn honestly could be Buster Tail. <laughs> there's, there's not much uh, mm -hmm. that you can do against that Pokemon. It's, it's, it's awkward. 160 hit points usually means that a V or EX Pokemon has to be worked into the mix to take the knockout. It's a single prizer. And Grant Shen being forced to respond with Buster Tail seems great. You're putting those energies in play, putting a single prizer in the active, but Dean does have hand disruption in his deck. I don't believe Roxanne was into the Lost Zone this whole time, Kyle. Yep, it's still holding on to that, so that is the eject button in case everything goes wrong. Pokestop played almost guarantees Roaring Moon will be knocked out this turn. The question now is how. There's risky strategies where Iron Hands takes the three prize cards. You can go the single prize route, but that means you're playing this game for at least two more turns after this. And do you even have that opportunity with Dean at two prize cards remaining? It is a little ironic, isn't it, Kyle, that Grant Shen and Dean seem to be in a similar situation, despite Dean being ahead, the potential for your attacker to get knocked out and needing to scramble so hard to find something else to attack with, even when you're in a great position without the next link in the chain, the next step of taking prize cards, your tempo can evaporate just like that. Superior energy retrieval discards the Chen Pao to pull a bunch of water energy from the discard pile back to the hand. And it is indeed going to be a buster tail. Yep. And this ball can search and at least see that the resources are there. You see the iron hands, which might just be used for hit points at the end of the game, hoping that Prime Catcher is one of those last prize cards as we saw in game one, but it's not going to be the fate that we have lined up. Mirage Gates are the big piece at this point for Dean. We could try to take a look. I think we've seen two so far, but if it is three, then that means the resources won't be available for the Iron Hands. I know one is in hand. Comfe, it's up to you, pal. Grant Chen diligently taking prizes, responds to the Roaring Moon after it had knocked out Chen Pao. Buster Tail only dealing 130 damage. Pretty respectable if Dean doesn't put another two-prizer back into the active, can deal with most everything else in the list. Iron Hands EX is here and ready to go, but the number of Mirage Gates are very important to see if it can even attack next turn. I know that Super Rod maybe getting Roaring Moon back, getting some Darkness Energies back could be the way to go. And are you going to go all in? on just getting Roaring Moon set up once more, especially thanks to Artisan being almost guaranteed this turn. It seems like a good line to me. Yep, Amphi very much could close out in this spot. Dean wants to take one last look at the counts. Would really like to know what those last few cards are, and he just must be a little unsure at this point. Pokestop could flip over, see a Mirage Gate, Super Rod, double Mirage Gate would have all the resources lined up for Amphi very much with that Prime Catcher for the win on any of these Pokemon on the bench. You could always use the Poke Gear, take a look. Dean is gonna see now. Don't need that Culver's Experiment, Down just two cards remaining. Rescue Board picked up, gives a retreat, can save some energy, which is nice. I believe there's already a switch in the hand, so it doesn't matter, but you can see that those last two cards are Artisan? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> What's, what's going on here? <laughs> it's not relevant at this point, but I just find it particularly hilarious how the Roaring Moon was forced to go for Frenzied Gouging because of that. I mean, we're so curious about what these last cards are. Just use Poke Gear. Take a look. <laughs> You'll be able to find out what's going on. So the Darkness Energy was attached from hand onto the Iron Hands. Indeed, yep. double, two, artisan. double Art is on the out. bottom of the deck. And so... With 
one Mirage Gate, Super Rods. So it needs to be it needs to be double Mirage Gate, right, to still pay for the energy cost on yeah, Ampy very much. And that's not available. I think it's just the one Mirage Gate that's that's there. So at this point, you can kind of hedge your bets. You have that psychic energy that you can incorporate with the Sableye if you already have enough cards in the Lost Zone. Which I think I'm the assuming Sable we're pl plenty full at this point. It's all starting to run together, Kyle. This is is this the game where Sableye went to the Lost Maybe Zone? Maybe so. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> So might not have access to that play, but needs to put something in the active. Still needs to attack this turn. Is there a window of opportunity for Grant Shen to punish this? The fact that Iron Hands can't get powered up this turn, try to bring it into the active and knock it out with the Chen Pao? Yeah, Dean trying to buy time. Has the energy attachment onto the Iron Hands and is going to wait a turn now. We'll have the energy that he'll top deck and then use the Mirage Gate for the final two. And uh, here it is, past the turn. Big opportunity for Grant if he's able to remove the Iron Hands from play. Rolling up his sleeves, he's ready to get down to business, Kyle. If it is possible, the CEO of Chen Pao will do the digging and find that line. Can see Dean's entire deck, essentially, in play in the discard pile. Only a few cards are unknown to Grant within the hand and the prizes. We like pink cards. They're very good. And that lines up perfectly. Prime Catcher along with that Chin Pao guarantees that knockout onto the Iron Hands. There's plenty of energies to go along with this. And that doesn't even begin to talk about the resources that are in this hand before the barrel and throwing down with the Super Cold. So it bench Chen Pao, Prime Catcher, bring the Max Caliber into the active spot, manually retreat it to send those water energies to the discard pile. Is there a superior to bring those back? I think there is still one left. Yeah, I think I see it as second to last card in the end. Iron Hands targeted down, Chen Pao to the active. Dean coming up short on just one Mirage Gate. Couldn't take the Ampy very much. KO last turn to close out game number two. And now with Grant Shen finding the Prime Catcher, thanks to Irida, has Shivery Chill to take two water energies out of the deck and add to the hand. Ops for just one. I think I miscounted, but that's okay. And in order to knock out Iron Hands, EX just needs four energy in play, and it's all ready to go. You start thinking about every resource at this point. Potential to knock out a Chen Pao. It would have to be an inadvertent benching from Grant Shen to have that fifth Pokemon onto the bench for a Raikou V to take a knockout here if Dean were able to fill his bench back up. Don't expect that to happen. Koopa won't be able to reach the threshold. Iron Hands, even if it's brought back in, requires those four energies. Mirage Gate and Attachment only brings you three. Very stellar gameplay. Super Rod puts Chen Pao and two Water Energies back into the deck. Just prepping the next attacker needs to, even despite being put on this very odd prize trade, this very odd prize count, Grant Shen with one prize card remaining once more, just like in game one, establishing multiple attacks way ahead of time, removed Dean's key attacker he was relying on to close out the game. And what is the final piece he can lean into to take down Chen Pao EX. Yeah, he knows every resource that he has available at this point. Super Rod, he can look through the discard pile and try to find a Pokemon. He can use Roxanne and maybe by some miracle slow down Grant to not find the superior energy retrieval. Is there one more Super Rod to put an attacker back into the deck? Hardison to stare at some energies. Now, Dean is the one that's painted into a corner. This happens so often with these lists. At the 11th hour, if your opponent is able to get one final bit of disruption, one final advantage to throw you off of your game, the strategy you were setting up really puts the final nail in the coffin. Technically does have to shuffle these two energy cards after the Artisan. Yeah, in this spot, I'm seeing... Super Rod, Iron Hands, draw back into it with Roxanne, play an energy on it, use that Prime Catcher onto a barrel, and hope that you don't see Superior Energy Retrieval next turn. If you do leave that Pokemon stranded in the active spot by some miracle, 
then you can mirage gate onto it and try to take a knockout, but you're asking so much. Mm -hmm. Because in order to use the frenzied gouging, the Calamity Storm requires another mirage gate. Can you get the but there's no dark way to, energy there, is there, drawn? Yeah, there's no way to get this out of the deck now, even with the super rod. So this is the risk that you take now. I, you have the Roxanne that can draw, but you need to find the Roaring Moon and one of the Dark Energies, not the other one, so that you can draw into it with Mirage Gate. He's trying to map this out, math this out so that it works out. There is a world where you can draw into the right pieces and take the Chen Pao, but you have to get a little lucky to not see both Dark Energies. And getting as many cards out of the hand as possible before the Roxanne. Needs to put just the right amount of cards, actually, right back into the deck right. to and, and, and then what? maximize the, ch the chances of getting the Roaring Moon based on how many are left. There's five cards in the deck after the Super Rod. How many cards do you want to see before this, though? Because you're, you have Flower Selecting, which can help you see at least one more final piece. But the you, energy in the deck... This is so big. All right. Energies have to be... Have to remain in the deck at this point. Just one dark energy would be ideal if Dean were to see that off of six cards. Along with the Roaring Moon, Mirage Gate would be able to get him the rest of the way. It's a great spot. It's a dangerous spot. But these are the lines. Rescue board is attached to Comfey. Means that it can retreat for free. Very big draws. One dark. And a Roaring Moon. He's one, but how many energies is that at this point? Ugh, you have Does to he find... have an additional one? He's looking for the Pokemon now. Prime Catcher, Mirage Gate. Prime Catcher goes to the Lost Zone. He's got Mirage the, Gate He's got the Roaring Moon. He's got the Mirage Gate. Are there two energies remaining out of the three cards? It's two dark oh, energies. No! It doesn't work. Oh. With Mirage Gate, you have to find two different kinds of energy. After the rock sand drawing into the lightning and the water, the Mirage Gate was not enough to accelerate to Roaring Moon, and Grant Shen advances. Wow. <laughs> what a sweat. Dean tried.